Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News on Now You Know, episode 19. Hey, it's kind of cold. Let's go in the car. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get down. Yeah, we've got a lot of news today, so let's get going. All right. So on January 10th, Tesla announced the details of how their supercharger credit program will work on a blog post on their website. Yeah, Tesla owners of cars sold after January 15th of 2017 will get 400 kilowatt hours of free supercharging credits every year on the anniversary of their delivery. All right. The price after that will depend on where you are charging, with most areas charging per kilowatt hour. For example, in Massachusetts, um, it's currently 22 cents per kilowatt hour, and Illinois is 15 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, some areas will charge by the minute, depending on what tier you're charging at. So, for example, tier one is 60 kilowatts or less, tier two is over 60 kilowatts. So, for example, in Texas, Tesla would charge 8 cents per minute for tier one and 16 cents per minute for tier two. All charges above the 400 kilowatt hours yearly allowance will take place automatically to the credit card that's filed on your My Tesla page. This works out to be cheaper than gas because Tesla said they do not aim for this to be a profit center, only to help finance more superchargers. So for example, a Tesla owner could travel from LA to New York for $120 on superchargers, which we estimate would cost over $250 for an ICE car. Unused credits do not roll over to the next year. There will also be an idling fee of 40 cents per minute if you leave your car parked after charging at a supercharger where the majority of the stalls are filled. There will be a five minute grace period and you will be notified on your app. Now this is intended to reduce congestion at busy superchargers. So now at least you can feel better if some schmuck leaves their Tesla park for too long because he's gonna be helping to fund more superchargers. Lots of times we talk about the number of supercharging locations, but one thing we don't always talk about as often is the number of stalls at those locations. Well now Elon is talking about it, having tweeted on January 10th, Increasing capacity at existing supercharger locations now has top priority. Some are overflowing while a nearby one is empty. Tesla plans to have 15,000 stalls by the end of 2017. Check out this map of planned superchargers for this year. So up until now, Samsung had been making pouch style batteries. But this week at the North American International Auto Show, Samsung SDI unveiled its new 21700 cylindrical battery. Wait, doesn't Tesla have a 2170 battery, cylindrical battery? Nope, this is different. It's the 21700. But it looks like the same battery. Nope, you weren't listening. Samsung named it the 21700, not the 2170. This will be the battery going into the Lucid Motors and Faraday Future Cars. So the story here is Samsung copied the Tesla and Panasonic playbook? That's pretty much it. Wow. So we've talked a lot about Faraday Future and Lucid Motors. Faraday Future, Lucid Motors. Next up is a story about a company you may not have heard about. In fact, we hadn't heard about it until this week. When Rivian Automotive, a small 100 employee company that was founded in 2009 by CEO and founder RJ Scaringe, an MIT graduate, announced they have just closed a deal on a shuttered Mitsubishi plant in Normal, Illinois. This 2.6 million square foot plant closed in 2005 and now Rivian plans to invest 175 million over the next seven years and create 1,000 jobs to start using it to produce electric cars starting in 2019, with an unveiling of their first model expected later this year. Rivian has a bunch of top execs from companies like Chrysler, GM, Ford, and A123. We'll keep you posted more about the details as they emerge for this stealthy company. Hey dude, did you hear the buzz? What, that VW announced its all-electric 2020 concept retro minibus at the North American International Auto Show this week in Detroit? Yeah, man, like it can go forever. You mean a 270 mile range on a 111 kilowatt battery pack? Yeah, man, it's like groovy fast. You mean how it has a zero to 60 in about five seconds and a top speed of 99 miles an hour? Yeah, and like check out those digs, man. Are you talking about the interior with all those cool seating configurations? Yeah, man, like this is the ultimate dead mobile. Imagine going to shows in this sweet ride. Yeah, they're going to be building 30 different models on this platform by 2025. <coughs> what? Yeah. 
they're going to be. So this is basically the the base of a ton of new ideas for VW. Oh, so like SUVs, crossovers are all going to be built on this the skateboard platform. Yeah. Wow. Good for them. It sounds familiar. Yeah, it does sound familiar. So have you been uh, saving your pennies since you saw the FF91 last week at CES? Uh, why? Because Lieko CEO Jia Yuting said in a Chinese interview this week that we can expect the car to cost less than two hundred ninety thousand dollars. I thought that we had heard to expect one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand. Well, it looks like it's going to be a little pricier than that. So, how many of you would still be interested in a two hundred and ninety thousand dollar FF ninety one? Uh, post your comments down below. Yeah, that. I, I hope we have fans that rich. <laughs> so, what if you want to get around with zero emissions for under two grand? You mean under 200 grand? No, I'm talking about the Chinese manufactured Monroe 2.0 electric moped that's expected to hit the US in the second quarter of this year for around $1,700. Yeah, this looks retro. Yeah. The gas tank is just for show, apparently, and the ovoid like shaped central compartment holds up to two battery packs, each giving about 30 miles of range. Wait, so this can go up to 60 miles using two battery packs? Yep. It weighs 77 pounds and it gets a top speed of 28 miles an hour, so you can drive it both on bike lanes and city streets. Wow, that sounds like similar specs to the Eli Zero that we covered last week. Remember the $10,000 um, electric car? Yeah, and this is like way cheaper too. In fact, you could buy five and still have money left over. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So Tesla announced at the Gigafactory investor event that the Gigafactory 1 is an all-electric factory with no fossil fuels, natural gas or petroleum, directly consumed. We will be using 100% sustainable energy through a combination of a 70 megawatt solar rooftop array and solar ground installations. The solar rooftop array is seven times larger than the largest rooftop solar system installed today. The largest rooftop solar installation in the U.S. is currently on a Whirlpool Corporation Regional Distribution Center in Paris, California, and it's 10 megawatts. And there's one slightly larger, 11.5 megawatts in India. This would be bigger than both of those combined at 70 megawatts. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. And that's just what's going on the roof. China's National Energy Agency Deputy Director Yang Li Ji announced on January 5th that its government will be investing, get this, $144 billion in solar power over the next five years. So what does that mean for solar prices? Well. There's this Swanson's Law, we'll put this up here, that states that a 20% drop in solar prices is expected for every doubling of global growth. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, it means that if we had been sticking to Swanson's projections, we should currently be at about 80 cents a watt for solar. But we aren't. We're actually at 36 cents a watt. Right. Yeah, we're actually tracking lower than Swanson's projections, and with this new Chinese investment, Swanson's law would put us at about 65 cents a watt, but actually we're probably looking at 28 cents a watt by 2019. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing, because that means that there's going to be no need to even subsidize solar at those prices. That is just right. dirt and it's, cheap. And it's going to compete with coal natural gas, mm -hmm. everything. Everything. That's awesome. Yes, it is awesome. So in 1620, the Mayflower landed at Plymouth Rock. Uh, Dad, Dad, this is supposed to be like about the future and electric vehicles and stuff like that. What are you talking about? Yeah, the Mayflower is the future. What are you talking about? This, this is a concept of a fully autonomous, 100 foot long research ship that uses solar and wind technology to enable unlimited range research. Did I mention it uses drones? And it should launch on the 400th anniversary of the Pilgrims landing in Plymouth. That's Isn't crazy. This Look crazy? at this thing. Yeah. It looks so futuristic. I know. I can't wait to see what it really will look like. I know. It's it. I'm so excited if this thing really actually launches on time. I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. It's amazing looking. I mean, an autonomous ship that can that go can out go into forever. the ocean and go forever. Wow. I, it, this is the future, man. That's awesome. <laughs> so after a launch hiatus since the September 1st pre-flight test explosion, SpaceX just returned to successful flight on Saturday when they launched a Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. This mission brought 10 Iridium communication satellites into orbit. The spent rocket then landed on the autonomous drone ship. Just read the instructions. That's the name of the drone ship? 
Yeah. So okay. <laughs> yeah. So their last drone ship was um, tell me what was it? Tell me you love me. Uh, I still, of course, I still love you. Of course, I still love you. This one's called Just Read the Instructions. Nice. I love the naming of the drone ships. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is this footage is amazing. I yeah. I just want to recap what. SpaceX is doing if you um, if you haven't seen it yet because I know a lot of people haven't heard about well, it. Well, because the media doesn't cover it. They don't cover it enough. Here's what happens: you launch a rocket up into space, and you have to stage rockets, right? Because you can't have this giant rocket going up into space. It's a ton of extra weight once you use all the fuel. So what they do is they launch up the the first stage, um, and then the first stage separates, and then the second stage goes off into space. Mm -hmm. And the first stage turns around, mm -hmm. slows down. Mm -hmm. Start, comes in for landing mm -hmm. and then it lands like it like how it took off on a autonomous drone ship in the middle of the ocean right so it's it's careening down mm -hmm. from space mm -hmm. trying to hit something smaller than the size of a postage stamp I mean it looks it looks like a grain of sand mm -hmm. until about five seconds before it even gets anywhere close to it I mean like it's just it's miles up and it starts slowing down and then it just and, and I want to ask, is this being controlled by some guy with a joystick on the ground? No, this is, I mean, you couldn't do this from the ground. I mean, the cameras are vibrating so violently that and you the, can't see anything. And there's too much time between. So this yeah. is autonomous. This is, this is an autonomous landing on an autonomous drone ship in the middle of the ocean it's from space. If you haven't seen the footage, we're, I mean, we're going to show you some, but there's tons more. It's so exciting. This is the future of space because that rocket that lands on the drone ship you can use it again yeah here. usually they get burnt up in the atmosphere and you never see them again because right. they're gone so you it, recycled it's like, this is recycling i mean and elon has said before it, it would be like if you if you destroyed a 747 every time you took a flight right flight would be impossibly expensive right. so this is the future if you haven't seen one yet Check out those landings, they're amazing. It is so cool. Electric GT, which is an all Tesla, all electric racing championship, was using a Model S P85 Plus, but it is upgraded to a P100D, and after removing 500 kilograms of interior stuff and upgrading the suspension and brakes, they were able to reach speeds of zero to 62 miles an hour in 2.1 seconds. Wow. So, I mean, this is what Elon predicted in his tweet on January 12th. And if we extrapolate, it's probable that the car 0 to 60 should be 2.0 seconds. What does that mean? I mean, that means Tesla needs to come up with a new word to describe that kind of acceleration. Ludicrous no longer covers it. This is, this is inconceivable. Inconceivable! Can you imagine if they put an inconceivable button on your car? Oh my gosh. You just have a bunch of choices. Would you like to go insane, ludicrous, or inconceivable? Inconceivable. Yeah, I think I think they should go with inconceivable. I know that, that Elon likes uh, The Princess Bride. That's a great movie. It's and a great movie. I'm glad that he's a fan. So <laughs> I I would suggest that he goes And, and with I think that. when you push the button, that voice should come out. Inconceivable! Yeah. Inconceivable! <laughs> So I mean, this isn't this is not their production car, but no. basically, if you strip out a bunch of stuff, they yeah, let's do it. Let's they just, didn't replace any of the motors. No, this is just upgrade or the batteries. Right, this is a Tesla. They just upgraded the suspension and the brakes. It's basically what you do with an, any kind of race car. You'd strip yeah. out all the seats and everything. I know. When I first read it, I thought that meant they put new batteries and new motors in. Right, that's Tesla. Wow, wow. Let's just because strip Sparky of all let's the seats. Just, let's just talk about this for a second. The FF91 just when barely they, beat. Just barely beat the production. Right, it went 2.39 seconds. Right, just barely beat the production P100D Ludicrous. Right, but they didn't have any seats in that in that test car. Right, it was basically it was stripped. a stripped down. So, and it had a bigger battery and a bigger motor. Right. So I mean, so yeah, Tesla knows what they're doing. They certainly do. Wow. So I told you it would be absolutely totally and in all other ways inconceivable. So we're starting a new segment this week to let you know about new supercharger locations and this week's latest US supercharger is a six stall that just opened up in Lima, Montana. We're going to ask you to share with us some photos and information about these new locations. So if you're planning on driving through Lima or maybe you just live nearby, um, shoot us a 20 or less second 
clip of uh, you. You can be your face if you want, or, or maybe you just shoot out of the supercharger. Yeah, give it a review. The, you know, the amenities, what's around there, how mm -hmm. easy it is to get off the highway is or whatever Wi-Fi? road. Yep, uh, how many stalls, that kind of thing. And give it your own personal rating, you know, zero, one, to, one to 10 kind of thing. Um, because we want to share it, so. Yeah, we we'll could... put it on our next episode of Tesla Time News so that everyone can kind of see what these new superchargers look like and how you review them. Um, and the show notes below will tell you how you can share those videos with us. Awesome. Don't forget to check out our cross-country road trip where we reviewed 75 superchargers throughout the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And you can see how we reviewed them. Yep, and maybe you uh, have some better ways to review them. <laughs> so every episode, we want to take a comment from one of our viewers um, that we think is of note and sort of discuss it. And so this week, our comment comes from FS. What did he say? So he says, I wonder when we will hear more about all the Chinese electric vehicles in the making. So the Chinese electric vehicle market is huge. 600,000 electric cars. It's like double the United, US. the U.S. And it's more than Europe. Right. So, I and mean, yet we hardly ever hear we about it. We hardly ever hear about it. Thank it's, you so much for bringing this up. Yes. We are definitely planning on doing a video where we're going to be talking about nothing but that. Yep. Um, so definitely stay tuned and check that out on Now You Know. Um, thank yeah. you so much for leaving a comment. Um, Great comments this week. We really appreciate all of the support and, and info that you guys bring. We always are learning more um, from our community. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this week. If you could support us on Patreon, we would love it. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then that little bell button that reminds you of when you've got, we've got new episodes for you. That's just a notification for you. Right. And uh, please like this video. Right. If you like the video, YouTube will share it to more people. So it's almost like you're sharing it with friends that you don't even know you have. Making new friends. Making new friends. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know. Now you know.